Hello and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you're new here. Thank you so much for popping in. So for today's video, I'm going to be sharing five curriculum slash resources that I am pretty sure that we will never pick up again um, for use in our homeschool. And I will be sharing reasons as to why I have um, pretty much pegged these curriculums and resources as being things that I just will not bring back into our homeschool. Now, I know they say never say never. However, as time goes on, this is our fifth year of homeschooling. As time goes on and I observe our kids more, I learn more about their learning styles, uh, learn more about um, how I teach and just how things flow for us, there are certain resources that I can now eliminate from even being an option for us, like using in our homeschool, because I know that those things just won't suit us. First on my list, and these aren't in any particular order, but if I had to put them in any order, this would be number one, and that is all-in-one curriculum specifically for language arts. Our experience was with the Good and the Beautiful's uh, language arts program. That's actually what we started with when we initially started homeschooling. So I do have a video completely dedicated to all-in-one curriculum versus breaking up those components of language arts, doing like taking that approach. So if you wanna check that video out, I'll leave the link down in the description box. The main issue I saw with us using an all-in-one curriculum were that it just, it really left a lot of gaps. And don't get me wrong, there will be some learning gaps. It's inevitable, but there were just a lot of gaps. And I feel like because everything was included in the curriculum, there was just no way to really give proper focus to each area of language arts. And so when I decided to switch over and take the broken up approach, I saw much, much better results with my oldest. And that's the approach that I plan on taking with all of our kids. And so um, that's something that I won't be bringing back, to our, back into our homeschool. All-in-one curriculums are pretty much out the door for us. Uh, second on the list is formal basic handwriting curriculum. So while I do see the need for handwriting curriculum, like when it comes to proper letter strokes and things like that. I also see the value in letting that process happen naturally. I actually have seen this take place with my second child who has pretty much taught himself how to write. And I do understand that every kid is different. That may not be how things end up going for our last two kids. However, I think that it is pretty easy to squeeze in teaching our kids how to um, do proper letter stroke and just making sure that they're practicing proper letter form. Now I did emphasize basic handwriting curriculum because I do see the need for like a formal um, cursive handwriting curriculum. That is something that we will use in our homeschool. I actually have it on the shelf waiting for us to pick up when the time comes. But as far as like basic handwriting, letter and number formation, I think that that's something that we can absolutely do without a curriculum. Um, and as far as perfecting penmanship, I think that copy work is more than enough, at least for how we do things in our homeschool. And so that's the approach that we now take instead of me using those funds for a formal handwriting curriculum. Third, so this was something, this was a curriculum that I shared here on my channel and I was testing it out, seeing if it would work for us, if it would be a good fit. At the time, we were still using the Good and the Beautiful's curriculum. And so I was trying to use the two together and it just, it didn't work. I also saw that this was really a curriculum that just wouldn't work for us in the long run. So that curriculum is Brave Writer, specifically the literature packs. While I do like Brave Writer, I like how it's set up. I like the idea of it. I like Julia Bogart's approach to teaching writing. This was just something like when I, I purchased, what was it, like two or three literature guides, I believe. But once I saw like how the literature packs were laid out, for me personally, I was like, well, this is something that I can really just get in the mode of doing like on my own um, during read aloud time. I can just get in the habit of asking certain questions for critical thinking and comprehension or even helping my oldest to think more creatively about certain things and really, you know, use his imagination and all that. Um, as his approach to writing. So I guess you could say I felt like the literature guides 
that I got from Brave Rider. It gave me good tools. It's very open. Uh, so I think it gave a lot of good breadcrumbs for me as the teacher, like as far as what direction to take, um, how I teach writing. Like for us, I feel like that was what I, I got from us trying out Brave Writer and that was what I needed. And so I don't think we needed any more than that one literature pack that we, um, one or two literature packs that we ended up going through. Uh, we did, Miss, what was it, Mr. Popper's Penguins and Charlotte's Web. Both really good, but once I saw how those literature packs were laid out, I was like, okay, I have the tools I need. I have the direction I think I want to go as far as how to teach writing. And so I'm just going to run with it. And that's what I've been doing. And I think it works really well, but I don't think the literature packs are a resource that I need to um continuously purchase unless it becomes a situation where i just don't have like the time uh, to dedicate to doing exactly what i would like to do um with our read alouds then i could see me purchasing these literature packs again but i don't foresee that um being the case and so yeah I can't say that we'd be picking Brave Writer uh, literature packs back up, but it is a good resource. And that's something that I want to note too. Any curriculum and resources that I mentioned throughout this video is not to say that I hate the resource um, or that they're not good resources. They just were not a good fit for our homeschool. And I don't think they will be in the future, to be honest. Next up is Abeka Math. So I actually have a video on uh, why it was that I switched us from a Becca Math to Math Mammoth, which we have been using um, in our homeschool now. Um, and we've been loving it. Great fit. But speaking on a Becca, so what I found for our homeschool is that the strict spiral approach to math just is not, I don't think that's the way for us to go. I think more either more of a mastery or mixture of mastery and spiral is what our kids need. So far, this approach has been working with um, working well with both of our older boys. Um, now, my second oldest is only five, and so he hasn't like really dug his heels into math just yet. I think I can I can see already that that approach, like purely spiral math um, approach to math, is not going to work for him either. So, really, for for us, what I found was that the spiral approach to math would have been good for us had it been the case that our boys like really need that much review but for my oldest i really think it kind of um made him lose like interest in doing his math um at some point when we made the switch to math mammoth which is more of a mastery approach to math but they still kind of trickle in a little bit of that spiral too when it comes to like the end of um end of unit and end of chapter uh reviews so they do still trinkle in the spiral approach. But when we made that switch, I definitely saw that my son was picking up concepts a lot quicker. He was be, um, he's been more confident when it comes to, like if I send him for independent work, sometimes he still will come and ask for help, but he can definitely understand more of how the concept is being explained and he's able to do things on his own because the information is right there in front of them. It's not like, okay, they explained this, but then what about this? Or, you know, I feel like everything is there and it's through like a mastery approach that he's able to get everything that he needs to understand the concept at whatever level that we're working on and lastly on my list is more of a resource so i i said fun packs like that's is that's the best way i can describe it so i put this on the list because i really found for us that this um could could have potentially become a money waster not to step on the toes of those who create these types of resources because a lot of families find them beneficial and a lot of them are good and valuable resources. But for us, I felt like it was just extra money being forked out really for no reason. When it comes to those type of educational resources, I think it depends on what type of homeschool you kind of you guys have. Because for us, we just are not that we are hands on, but only to a certain extent. And so a lot of those fun packs had like a lot of like um, print out laminate cut and, you know, they do like these little hand on activities and things like that. And to be honest, as far as 
I mean, besides art and science, our boys just don't really care to, <laughs> to have all those moving pieces for every subject. And then I was just like, well, I kind of forget about them after a while um, because like now I have one on the computer and I, I don't re really remember the last time I um, used anything out of it. But like I said, this is not me trying to, you know, um, say that those bundles, those packs that you find on the internet are worthless, that they don't have any value or anything like that. For our homeschool, I just realized that it was essentially a waste of money because that was not, that's not like the, the style of uh, learning that we really do in our homeschool. I know how I am and I won't use what's in those packs. Like I won't even think to go to my computer and pull something from them unless it was a situation where I felt like we needed extra review, extra practice or something like that. I don't really bring in um, things for like our, our core subjects just for the sake of fun. Um, so yeah those are five curriculum slash resources that i have pegged as being those things that we i'm pretty certain we won't bring back into our homeschool because they're just not a good fit and that's one thing that i've learned about homeschooling is that when it comes to because we have the the internet now there's an, an influx of information and resources you you have to learn like what actually fits your kids their learning style and your teaching style and all those things and you know everything that flows together for your homeschool you have to learn those things because it can really help you to sift through the noise and uh eliminate things that need to be eliminated don't even use it as an option because you know it's not going to be a good fit if you guys enjoyed the video then don't forget to hit the thumbs up and if you're not yet subscribed then don't forget to hit the red subscribe button as well i will see you guys in the next one.